step number eight is successor. Now, the last um, presentation, step seven, predecessor, it, you know, we left off where we had a, uh, you know, the we had an activity that had no predecessor or successor. Um, so we went ahead and assigned a predecessor of post-construction closeout to the last activity, which is um, uh, Certificate of Occupancy Inspection, CCD, Contract Completion Date. Um, so by doing that, now we have a closed network, um, and we're able to look at float numbers, uh, you know, and, and correct them as necessary. Um, so, um, the total float, as I indicated before, it's, the total float is simply a number, uh, it should be zero for critical path. If it's negative, we should have a, never have negative numbers in a baseline schedule. That indicates to us that there's got to be some type of constraint in here. Um, somebody had, you know, some type of constraint listed within here. Um, if we go... Uh, we're going to kind of, we'd have to go searching back through all the negative numbers and say, okay, well, where's the constraint? Um, and there may very well be one. Uh, a constraint is, uh, is simply defined as, um, you know, something that holds it, holds it, stops it from, um, from being naturally pushed by the schedule. Okay, so if we have negative five days, that means we have we're five days beyond completion. Let's go back to the project and look at the float real quick and look at the dates to see it has any plan uh, finish date. And it does actually. So we want to we want to actually leave this blank, right? Okay, and by leaving that blank, uh, we're able to um, that negative number should be taken away. And it was, you know, you can see the negative numbers taken away. The proper way to do it is just put a, a constraint on the last activity, activity, finish on or before a specific date. You know, it automatically populates it with that specific date. Now, if I were to say, okay, it's got to be the 16th, it should show negative numbers up there. And it does. It, should, it, it showed negative one day. So, you know, if I'm going to say that, you know, everything needs to get done on January 16th, and you can we can look over here um, what what this says is that the contract completion date is one day beyond when we plan when we need to get it finished right so notice all the days before um, you know how what it shows if I were to go even further back and I were to say that say the ninth right it's going to say the seventeenth um, is the you know is the uh, um, it's six days it's that's what the 17th the January 9th is six days after um, excuse me it's the 17th is six days after January 9th so for a baseline schedule we want to make sure that we don't have uh, any negative float at all okay now we're gonna come back later and we're gonna compress the schedule and we'll make make sure it fits into the time frame we needed but just know that uh, total float is the amount of spare time of related to any activity the critical path which is the longest path to the network which is indicated in red here okay should have zero float there should be zero numbers there so we put a, a constraint only one constraint um, as at the finish and only one constraint at the start. Remember, it doesn't have a predecessor, a successor, and then notice to proceed doesn't have a successor. So there has to be some type of constraint, some date constraint. Now, moving on to successors here. Um, remember, we should only have one successor uh, uh, per, uh, I mean, we should have at least one successor for every activity. Um, a successor of one is a predecessor in the, of the other. So if it was, um, a, if the successor of install VCT in restroom is install plumbing fixture, um, that is obviously, if we hit go to here, we now have gone to the plumbing fixture and that successor is a predecessor of it. So um, just understand that a predecessor of one is a successor of another. So when we go through all the activities and put all the predecessors in, what we have done is uh, we've created successors for others. Um, you're going to notice that we want we've gone through methodically and put all the predecessors. Now we're going to go through methodically and put all the successors. We only want to put um, one successor in every activity. 
Um, and the reason we're doing that is we want to prevent redundancies. We want to ask ourselves what happens immediately after this task. Uh, remember we talked about uh, not having an open network, which means we have multiple different activities that don't have a predecessor and successor. We want to have a closed network where only the first activity and the last activity are do not have a predecessor or successor. Notice to proceed doesn't have a predecessor and certificate of in, uh, certificate of occupancy inspection CCD only doesn't have a successor. Those are controlled by constraints. Um, date constraints, which I've showed you that before. Um, float does not matter. This float uh, float information does not matter. It doesn't uh, make any sense unless you have a closed network. If you don't have a closed network, then all these numbers don't mean anything. And it's important that those numbers mean something because we know that this activity right here, electrical terminations and final connection, we have 14 days of float, meaning this activity could push off 14 days without affecting the completion of the entire project. That's why we want to use float, okay? You'll notice when we go through and we, we try to, we go through, most activities will have a successor. The ones that typically don't have successor, uh, successors are pre-construction. Um, you know, things like submittals, for example, because we don't naturally think, okay, well, we want to place under slab rough in. We don't naturally think, okay, what submittal takes place before that? We think logically during, uh, of construction. And that's why we want to do everything, um, methodically. We want to go through and, and, put all the predecessors in, come back and then put all the successors in because we'll see that some activities do not have, you know, successors and we want to fill those in. So at the end of uh, this step, you, every, every activity should have a successor that allows us to have float numbers that actually have meaning. And that pretty much covers successors. We've gone over, uh, you know, that a successor of one is a predecessor of another. We've talked about having a closed network. We talked about being methodical and putting in all the predecessors and then putting in all the successors. Uh, we talked about the float not have meaning unless it has a closed network. We want to make sure the last activity has a date constraint to it. We want to make sure there is no negative float when we put a baseline schedule together. And we want to make sure we understand that total float is simply the available slack in the schedule. So that covers step number step number 8 successors